Hey everyone, welcome to Altekeys. I'm Pankaj Rai and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add Google OneTap sign in to your Android application using Firebase Authentication. So Firebase Authentication is once a service offered by Firebase through that you can add various kind of authentication mechanism to your Android, iOS and web application. It offers you the anonymous authentication, then federated authentication like Google, Facebook, GitHub, even traditional email and password based authentication. All sort of things you get it free of cost and also you get all the accounts managed right on the console so that you could keep track of all the users who are signing up. Not just this, if you are using Cloud Firestore then you can write a cloud function so that as soon as user is signing up you could write their details onto the Cloud Firestore. Now let's see how we can add one tap sign in to our application and why do we even need this? So one tap sign in is actually needed for the better UX. Like think of the case when you want to onboard your user when they want to sign up and if you show them multiple screen then it's not kind of good UX. So how about giving them an experience where just from a single tap they could either sign up or sign in. So one tap sign in is meant for that. So to add this to the application, add to the Gradle file, the authentication for Firebase and Google Play service auth dependencies. After that, let's switch back to the main activity where I have user login as a composable and this is the place where I'm going to initiate the one tap sign in. So get the context from the context ambient.current and one tap client. So this is an object through that we are going to begin our sign in or sign up request. And one thing is like with one tap sign in, it's not like a separate screen, whether it's sign in or sign up, the flow remains same. And by this way, you give a consistent experience to the user. And one thing, if you could observe here, is there is sign in request and a sign up request, and both of them are nothing but the sign in request itself. So there is nothing called a sign up request dot builder. It's all sign in request dot builder. And what makes the difference here is set filter by authorized accounts. So when you are signing in, then you can enable this as true. And when you're signing up, you can make this as false. And what it means is like when you enable this, it means whenever you tap on the button, show them the account with which they have logged in before. And if it's just a single account and you made this as true, set auto select enable true, then it will automatically select the Google account and will log in the user. And in case they are the first time user, in that time you will not see this as showing the list of accounts with which they have signed in before because they are the first time user. So it's an obvious case you'll get uh, error there, then that's a great time to show them the sign up request by toggling this to false. So let's see how we can get started with this. So we have our one tap sign in client, sign in request, and sign up request. So let's see how we can use it. So right on a button click, I'm initiating this one tap sign in, which requires one tap client, sign in request, sign up request, Firebase authentication, and user login state. Where this user login state is just to toggle from login screen to different screen. And these are the useful part for the sign in or sign up process. So let's start with sign in first. So initially, when user tap on sign in button, we'll initiate with begin sign in with the sign in request. If user has already signed in before, then we'll get the account. User can tap on the account, or if it is auto selected, it will automatically select the account and then it will come in on success listener. Then we can perform our authentication there onwards. But, but if the user is a first time user and have never used his account before for signing in, then it's an obvious case that it will come on add on failure listener. And here you can have a condition check that uh, it could be like a credentials not found. And if it is matching with that, then you can initiate the sign up request. Sign up request also looks similar to the sign in request. The only difference here is like for sign in, the filter account was true, here it's false. And once this is successful, 
then perform the authentication now here what we are doing is that we are registering for the callback so just like we have the register for activity result is starting for result in traditional way here we have register for activity result and it needs a contract so here the contract given is for start intent center for result which in turn is going to give us the result and from this activity result we can get the result code and the data so this data is nothing but you could think as if you have an intent with the traditional start activity for result and you fetch the data by calling intent dot data so here it's activity result dot data so if result code is success get the credentials by calling this method get sign in credentials from intent where you will pass activity result dot data and from this credentials get the id token so so far so good till here you made your user to get authenticated you have their credentials like the id username and now the google sign in is successful so if you are not using firebase authentication then you'll end up here itself then you can send the id tokens or the username to your backend and make your user to proceed to the next screen however if you are using firebase authentication then initiate the firebase auth also so for that the id token that we have got we'll pass that to the get credential method and we'll begin the sign in with credential and that's it so just by calling this method you will make your user to get authenticated with firebase auth and what it means is like now you'll have a consolidated place for seeing all the accounts with which users are logging into your application and the advantage that you get here is like say if you're using firebase for android ios and web then right from a single place you can keep track of all the users who are using your application you can delete their account you can disable their account or if it is password based then you can reset the password also however this is google so here you get this two advantage of disabling their account or deleting their account so that's it for this video where i've talked about how you can add google one tap sign in to your android application but one thing to remember here is if you get an exception in the callback then read through the status code and see what kind of exception that is and appropriately take the action for example when sign in dialog from the bottom it's like a bottom sheet and if user has clicked cross on it they press the back button then it will obviously come to the cancel and this is the place where you need to keep track of the cancelled sign in request because if you are trying to do it over and over then you will end up with blacklisting for a certain period of time so, and you may not want that so do keep track of this cancelled and take appropriate action when user cancel the sign in flow also if there is a network error then you could either show them an option to toggle on the internet or if you're targeting android q and above then you have a setting panel so right in the same application show them the setting panel to toggle on their internet so by this way they need not have to again go back to a different application or switch from the notification panel rather everything will go on right from the same application in. also for google sign in the one thing which is really important is the client id so if you see here i have passed this set server client id so how do you get this client id so for that create a project on firebase you'll get the json add that json to the application and from that project itself you have to switch to the authentication toggle on the google sign in and the moment you toggle it on you'll get the web client id you just need to pass that id to this place that's it so that's it for this video hope you have liked it if you have liked then do hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe the channel so that you could get a notification for the upcoming videos on android kotlin and firebase thank you and stay tuned